Welcome back to Saturday Sportster season two. We're working on the second half of our project, which is gonna be the final assembly. It's something you don't want. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Saturday Sportster. We just got everything back from paint. Our buddy Joe from Angel Dust Cycle Paint hooked this thing up. We were kind of going for like a black bike, but he really went all out with this paint job. In the shade, it'll look like it'll black. it's a black bike, but in the sun, the purple that's underneath will really pop. And come over here and check out what he did with the gas tank and fender. We wanted some flames on it and he just he just really killed it with the orange flames on here. And look at the transition, how it just, it, it almost looks like they're on fire. It's really great. So now that we got everything back, we're gonna start assembly. And this is the more exciting portion of our project because this is gonna be closer to actually riding this motorcycle. But it can also be more stressful because it is painted nice and uh, you got to be really careful. So I'm going to try to help you walk you through some tips and tricks to, so that you can bolt this thing together the easiest, but then also cleaning off paint in areas so that after you torque everything up, that your bolts will stay tight and all your fasteners and such will stay tight the longest without the paint making things come loose and such. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is clean off any surfaces, say bearing surfaces or bushings where paint dust or overspray or anything like that could have gotten into those surfaces. Paint booths are often pretty dirty with stuff like that. So you're just gonna wanna wipe off all your surfaces, definitely bearing races and bushings alike. Any kind of interior hole that something's going to slip inside of. Some of those places are just a little difficult to keep paint dust or things alike out of them. Your painter is probably going to blast this frame and so you might still have a little bit of sand or glass or whatever kind of media he uses. And then also you have your brake crossover at the bottom of the frame. You're gonna to wanna to push something through there to get all that dust and grime out of there. So I would ball up some paper towel and just maybe use some welding rod or something similar to that and just kind of push this all the way through. Try not to get it stuck in there, which I just did, I think. There we go. Yeah, look at all this. Oh, man. Yeah, look at all that. This was a brand new clean paper towel. So you definitely want to clean that up. It's got a leftover grease and all kinds of stuff. You just might want to do that a few times. It probably wouldn't hurt if you sprayed some brake cleaner or acetone or something on your, on your rag before you push it through. Let's get a little bit more out of here. Maybe we'll do it a third time. And I'm just pushing this all the way through one end to the other. Yeah, just clean some of that grease out of there. It does have a Zerk fitting on the back side of the motor mount for you to dump in grease, but you definitely don't want grease from the 70s in here. So try to get some of that out. Maybe we should have done that before it was painted, but it's no time like the present. And after we get this cleaned out, we're also gonna wanna clean off the paint in a lot of mating surface areas so that it's metal to metal bolting up and you don't have a layer of paint to smush and then you're gonna have to re-torque stuff constantly. Get your mating surfaces just right, your bike, will, your hardware will stay tight the longest and you won't have to keep retorquing things. So this is one more pass through. There we go, I think that'll be okay. Ugh, nasty. Okay, so areas that we're gonna have to clean off we're gonna to have to clean off where the rear motor mount bolts up. And so on an iron head, there's a few easy spots, four easy spots on the back for you to clean off. And then also in the front, where the front motor mount plates bolt, there's a nice surface for you to clean off there as well. We're also going to be clearing off the paint on the inside of your axle plates because there's a spacer on your axle that has two flats. And so those snap inside the axle plate and now that there's paint on there, I actually can't get that to snap in. So we're gonna need to clean that off so that these will actually slide in there. The same with the axle, the axle has matching flats on it. 
that does the same thing. So we're gonna need to clean the paint off so we can get those inside now. So we're gonna use a razor blade. I also have a grinder, a right angle air grinder with a Scotch-Brite pad on it that is just abrasive enough to clean off the paint, but isn't so much to actually score the metal. So once you see the metal shiny again, you know that you've gone far enough. So these work great for that. We're also gonna use a razor blade. We're gonna tape off some areas with some masking tape, just so you don't, just to protect and keep the dust off of there, especially when you're grinding. So here we go with that. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the rear motor mount. And you, you might wanna just put a little bit of masking tape on there. We'll cover the whole thing up. And we might cut that off. It's just gonna to try to protect, because it'll be easy for you to slip and cut way too much off. I wonder if we just don't, oh, there we go. See, I'm just kind of, I kind of scored the area and then I'm just trying to cut off what I scored. This actually is going pretty good. I don't know if I need the masking tape on this side, but either way, it's good to have. There we go. And you're just trying to take that thick layer of paint off because the paint's pretty thick and so you, it's going to squish. When you bolt that motor mount up to it and so you don't want that motor mount coming loose. Does it go all the way down? No. Well, and I guess it worked out nice because then it kept all the paint shards too. Clean up just a little bit more. There we go. That came out pretty good. And you just want to clean that up. You're also going to have to check that you're a bolt fits through there. If you have to drill some of these out or just run the same size drill bit into these holes, that's also a necessary process. Because the, just a little bit of paint, some of these holes are really exact. You're going to have to clean some of those out. So we're going to do the same thing over here. And yes, this is a very tedious part of it, but the nicer you do this kind of stuff, the nicer it's gonna be after all. And I think it's really important that you clean off these surfaces nice. And this isn't just the motor mount, this is pretty much anywhere on your bike where you fabricated stuff where two things are bolting together. You don't want a huge layer of paint in between those those two surfaces. On iron heads, your motor mount rests on these shelves, so it's nice to get these cleaned off too. So it's not keeping it raised up and puts restriction on that bolt hole when you try to put it in. I 
think that looks pretty good. Okay, so that's good for the rear. Came off pretty easy. I guess I might not even use that Scotch Bright pad. That might be a better tip if you say if you powder coated the frame and it's something thicker, you're not gonna really be able to cut it with a razor blade, but it's coming off easy with the razor blade right now. We're also gonna to need to clean off the spot where the kickstand goes. We got a couple issues we have to deal with. So first we have a spacer that slips on in this hole and that isn't going in the hole. So we're probably gonna to need to drill that out or maybe just when we clean off the paint off the flat surfaces, we can chip it out of the internal hole. Cause also this is snaps around the boss of this kickstand mount and the paint is so thick that it's not allowing it to go on. So we're gonna to have to clean off some paint. Luckily, the kickstand mount has got some wear in it, so we have a really nice arc that we can cut across and then clean off both sides, top and bottom, so this snaps over easy. Because either way, with this thing sliding around, even if it did slip over top, it's gonna to chip all that paint away. So it'll be nice to get like a nice clean, scored mark where we cut the paint away so that it doesn't just chip uncontrollably in that area. So even if your kickstand fits, I would suggest doing something like this. So now I'm gonna tape it off just like I have been. And if you look, you'll be able to see a really nice where the kickstand has actually worn into this plate. And we're gonna cut a nice arc right along this area and try to follow that. So when the kickstand moves, we're not gonna get just all kinds of chipping down here. I think I can kind of see that. See if we gotta do both sides. We 
probably should. Okay. This side has a nicer spot for you to, you can clean this off totally on the back side. There we go. I'm okay with that. All right, just tap that bitch in there. <laughs> this might be an appropriate place to use this. That grinder works really well, except it just gets everything really dusty. So I would just be careful using that method. The razor blade obviously keeps things very clean, but takes much longer than the grinder. It's still kind of tight. Always a pain in the ass. Oh, I'm gonna get pinched so good. stop for this. So I noticed after bolting the kickstand on that where it was going to be in the all the way up position, it was actually going to hit the frame. So I'm just going to add a little bit of weld to give it a place to hit so it'll stay off of the frame and won't chip my paint after the kickstand is up and installed on the bike. So I'm just going to add some weld on the inside of here. And this will give it just a place for the kickstand to stop. It's hard to kind of aim in there where you can see. Good idea to add a little bit more because you can always grind some away, but you don't want it to be a small little area because it is going to smack up there kind of hard and you don't want it to just be so small that it just smushes out after like 10 times. So put a little bit on there. I also don't know how much I need. Luckily all that's going to go away once you bolt this thing on. Let's bolt this thing on there and then we're going to just do a little bit of fit so it's got enough clearance to the frame after it's up. Way too much. Okay. That's good though. And I just grind this a few times, bolt it up a few more times. You really want it to be like about a quarter inch off the frame when it's bolted up.
Look at that. Perfect. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Okay, now we can put the spring back on. I would suggest probably fitting this in the frame before you put the motor in. You don't want to have to do this with the motor inside. And a lot of the kickstands, it's much easier to get on and off with the motor out of the frame. This should be one of the first things that you put on. So we're going to grab some Loctite, some glue. That's great. Minimal nicks. It's almost impossible to get the kickstand on without nicking something, at least for iron heads. So I think that went pretty good. So now we're gonna do the sliders on the axle plates. We also need to make sure that these fit in these holes. All right. Uh, this is tight. We might wanna drill that out. It's okay. All right, that's all right. We're going to clean off the inside surface for the axle, and then we'll be able to start putting this thing together. There we go. Okay. So now we got the paint cleaned off of all of our surfaces. We got the kickstand on. We haven't started on the bolts in the frame yet, so we're gonna start actually bolting this frame together. So we got our hardware and our battery box mount because this bolts where the bottom frame, bottom of the frame connects. So we're gonna put that on as well. We got everything set up and we're also gonna have our Loctite handy. So first off, well, let's actually start with the top. Our painter provided this tube to help line everything up. I would probably, I guess it's kind of tight because he painted the tube also. Uh, I'm gonna grab some pliers. I gotta kind of wiggle that out. Wiggle that out of the way and then slip in one side of that shoulder bolt. Now, if you remember from earlier episodes, we had a little washer that we slipped in between here to help reduce the amount that the frame would pinch in the rear when we bolted everything tight. So we're slipping those back in. Okay. That I gotta wiggle more of this out of the way. And we're gonna use some red Loctite on these threads. This being your chassis, you definitely don't want this coming apart. And the same with the washer over here. Sneak it behind it. The painter was nice enough to give this back to us assembled, but if you're having trouble fitting these together once it's nicely and nice and painted, you could stick a piece of threaded rod, like 3 8 threaded rod through this back hole and put a nut on either side on the inside and actually spread this out just a hair so that the front mounts can easily slip over 
the bottom out of the uh, the front half of the frame. So this part could just slip over. So you're just gonna thread a rod, two nuts, spreading it out just a little bit so it'll slip on nicely and that should make it easier for you. That was the trick that the painter used to fit this together. Okay, so both of these plates go on the inside and we got Bolts are tight, but we also want them to stay tight. So maybe I should kind of thread that in first. The holes lined up. Yeah, no, they're lined up nice. There it'll go. There it'll go. Boom. Okay, and these have nylocks, so we don't have to use Loctite. There we go. Okay. Okay. Now let's tighten these up. for you to snug these up maybe once it's up in the air on some um, wheels to give it a nice retorque. So now we're gonna get this cleaned off and we're gonna set the motor down. Like I showed you before, we're gonna set the motor down on its side and snake this over top so we can bolt the motor and the frame. But like before, everything on its side, it'll make it way easier. So let's get this cleaned up and out of the way and we're gonna pull the motor over here. So before I'm taking the motor and setting it on its side to fish the frame around it, I'm gonna take it out of the stand that I have it in. And if you don't have one of these, these things are super simple to be able to work on your Sportster on and take all the covers off without having to like balance it on wood or something. So if you're gonna be working on one of these, I suggest you pick one up. And of course they're available at lowbrowcustoms.com and they just make it super helpful for working on a motor like this. Let's tip this over nicely and doesn't fall out. Go. Get this back over. Maybe we'll wiggle it so it's more on the lift. There we go. Tip this back over, and I got the oil lines taped up. So if they did have any oil in the motor, hopefully it'll won't leak everywhere. Now to get the frame wrapped around here. So we got our kit from Colony for the motor mounts. It's all nice chrome hardware. It comes with all the spacers you need. And we're gonna be using that to bolt the rear of this bike together. Well, and the front too, but we're gonna be using this kit to bolt this thing into the frame. Get, get all this out. So we taped it off to make it a little easier uh, so we're not like nicking this thing up when we fish it around the motor, but uh, it's pretty heavy. So if you got a buddy, it'll be a lot easier for you to uh, get an extra set of hands on this. So we're tagging Mikey in. He's going to take the front and we have the primary side down. We're tilting this over and we're going to get the, we'll get the bottom in first right there. go. There we go. Oh, it's nice to grab just one of your long bolts and fish it through the through hole in the motor mount to try to line these up and then you can kind of then we'll be able to start the blind holes. We're getting the rear tight first and that'll make it a lot easier. We'll be able to stand the motor up and then do the front mount. 
There's one blind hole on the frame coming from the front to the top right side of the rear motor mount. And I'm using an Allen because it, it just makes it a little easier to tighten this one up because there's not a much room around the cutout of the actual uh, top motor mount, the aluminum piece that bolts onto the rear of the motor. So it might make it just a little bit easier to snug this thing up. Okay. All right, we're going to pick this up. Okay. Stay right there, Mike. I'm going to go to the other side. This way. <laughs> okay. All right. Now we're going to get started on the front now that we got the rear tight and we're going to get these plates in here with all the spacers in the right spots. So before we get going bolting this bike together, I'd like to talk for a minute about torque specs. All the torque specs for things on your engine and then certain parts of your chassis, say if it was a stock bike, is going to be listed in your Harley service manual. But now that it's a custom bike, there's going to be lots of places where you're not gonna know what the proper torque spec is for the hardware that you're using. So to help with torque specs for places not found in your service manual, we printed out this cheat sheet from Fastenal and you'll be able to download a PDF of it in the description of this video. And it's great, it lists all, all different grades, fine thread, coarse thread, and torque in a range. This chart's really easy to follow and gives you the proper recommendation for the grade hardware that you may be using. The chrome hardware on this bike doesn't have the notches on the head of the bolts. But the most common hardware that you're gonna find, say at Home Depot and places like that, are gonna be grade five, so we're going to torque those as if they were grade five bolts. Torque spec is really important in areas of your motorcycle where lots of bolts hold on the same part. You don't want one side to be tighter than the other, especially on areas that may be a gasket surface, which could cause leaks. It's also good practice to use proper torque when you're bolting on parts held on by a single bolt because my version of tight may be different from your version of tight, and you definitely don't want to lose your headlight on the side of the road. So now let's step over to the motorcycle and I'll show you a couple areas to help explain what I'm talking about on uh, parts held on by multiple bolts. Okay, so when you unpack your front motor mount hardware kit, you get a lot of different bolts and this can be kind of confusing. First off, the easiest way is just to start off with the shortest bolt and that's gonna go through the top hole of your motor mount plate. And on a lot of stock ones, there's a nut that's actually welded on one of these. And that's because it's a little tricky to get to under your generator. But since we got this all apart and we're using the gas box kit, which does not have the nut, we have our generator off and that's going to make it really easy for you to bolt it together. So first you start with your shortest bolt. We're gonna stick it in the smallest hole and you're gonna put this in the top hole of the actual engine case where the motor mount bolts. So you're gonna, you got that in place and we're gonna use the same spot on the other motor mount plate. And we're gonna fish that in there. And for these, we're using the smaller washers provided. And we're gonna fish a washer on there. And then we're also going to fish a nylock. It's a little tricky, but you only got to do it once. It's not that hard. So we get the second longest bolt, or second shortest bolt, I mean, and that goes in the bottom hole. We're going to slip that in the bottom, and that'll help keep that plate stationary. There we go. Now for these plates. So these, this part of the spacer with all these ribs is actually supposed to sit against the slot of the plate, the motor mount plates that you have, and that actually keeps it from shifting on the slot. And these tubes sit against this side because this OD is supposed to be the same size as this OD of the bung that passes through. So these fit nice, 
but then you have these washers that this sits against and it keeps this tube from actually snapping inside the plate. So it centers over this washer and then the washer grips over the slots of the motor mount plate to keep everything nice and centered and snug in place. I've seen some people where they put the, this tube on this side of the plate butted up, but since that slot is so big in the plate, if you don't have that plate centered, it could be only grabbing on one side and that's what the washer's for. So tube, washer, plate in the center. And then you get another washer for the other side on the outside of these plates. So what I just explained that I'm gonna put it together and then we're gonna do a shot to actually, so you can visualize how it's supposed to look when it's all together. So we put this in there, we got a little washer and then the nice big washer. We stick that in, we got the tube in place and then we're going to take the other washer with the knurls on it and slip that into place. And then that passes all the way through. Oh, there we go. I don't have any tape obstructing. And so the same thing for the bottom. These bolts are exactly the same length. So it's just the ones that go through the motor that are different. So we got the long bolt with a little washer on it knurl then towards, towards the end of the threads. We're gonna stick that through the hole. And so the knurl then gets onto the, the large hole in the plate. We put the tube in first, cause that butts up to the piece that's actually welded in the frame that's the same diameter. And then we kinda have to just sneak this past the other. It can be a little tricky. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, okay. And we might need a hammer. There we go. And then we got the little washers on the outside, nylock at the bottom, nylock at the top, just so they all match. And then I would start tightening, get the, the top bolt on the actual case tighten first. And then I don't think it really matters which order you do it after that, but that one's like, that one I think sets everything. So we got 30 there. Just kind of snug these up to get us going, but now I'm actually gonna make sure they're nice and torqued. All right, got to change to, I wonder if I can get the Allen on here with this. On there. Okay. Put the top motor mount on. So this is the top motor mount. It was stainless and we had it polished. This thing's super nice because it allows you to mount your coil and then also your key. So it just keeps everything super tidy on the top of your bike, but I think it came out great. But it, it mostly about bolts in the stock location and then I'm, I'm gonna need to use a spacer. Sometimes these bolt right up, but sometimes you're gonna have to use uh, just a little bit of a spacer to sandwich in between the top of this and the bottom of your top motor mount. So as you can see, we got the rear wheel in and the motor and everything in on a jack stand, uh, sitting pretty much how it would sit as if it was a like a full rolling chassis. 
We use two jacks so we can like tilt the frame to help facilitate getting the rear axle and the axle plates. Don't forget when you get to this step, you're gonna have to put in your axle adjusters into the frame so that when you put your axle through, all your spacers will actually tighten up on the frame and you won't have a ton of space. But that's basically the same as how it was done in the mock-up stage. But now we got the bike flipped around and with the rear wheel in the chuck and to have the front of the frame able to move up and down, we can bolt the front end onto the neck and actually set the preload, rocking it back and forth and then get everything set with the front wheel with this whole thing backwards. It'll make it much simpler. So now we're gonna start with that, greasing the bearings and assembling the front end on the motorcycle. So first thing, if you don't have one of these from basically any parts store, do yourself a favor and go get one. It alleviates a ton of the mess from hand packing your Timken bearings. And they're cheap. Let's get one of these. The first thing we're gonna do is actually pack our pack the bottom Timken bearing because that one we're going to have to tap onto the stem. So it goes in upside down, just slip it in there and you're going to push down on this or you can stand on it if you want, but you just want all the grease to pop out from inside these bearings right here between the race and the cage. It should be full of grease everywhere. And I'm actually just going to stand on it. Oh, there we go. And as you can see, it's actually popping out through the cage. If you don't have one of these, do yourself a favor and go get one. Because otherwise you got to scoop it up by hand and it's still managed to make a, a mess, but not as much as if you did this all by hand. After that, I would take all the excess and just, you got it inside the cage as you can see. And then I would just run some externally on the bearings and get some on there. Okay. And now we're ready to install. So we drop that on here. Gonna have to slide a little bit, get it started. And so I got this tool that I machined. It's just a piece of tube, nothing fancy, but it slips over the stem really nice. And then also hits that race. Something's going on. This shouldn't be so difficult. Oh, it's crooked. There we go. Okay. Then we're gonna use my tool. Slide it all the way down, and then we need to tap it. Oh, f it seems a little too tight. Did it go? Yeah, it seems like it went. Yeah, no, it went. Okay, sweet, perfect. All right, and then we're gonna do the same with the top. Stick that in there. I'm just going to stand on it. Oh, Jesus. Well, this isn't a really good ad for this thing, <laughs> considering I was saying get one of these to eliminate the mess. But here we are. Get one of these, at least it makes the mess a little bit more fun. Just get a little bit on the top. And all the old, uh, just start it on all the rollers. Once it starts rolling, all these will get really coated. But this thing isn't spinning really fast, so any help it can get. And you can just stick that right up on top. So now we're gonna slip this in. Oh, slip it in here. And you might need to just lightly put pressure on this side to keep it from coming out. We got our spacer. Oop. Come on. There we go. Go down. Our dust shield. The spacer was just to keep, since we got some aftermarket uh, cups on here, the spacer was just to space off the dub shield just that little bit so it doesn't rub. And then I just got to get this started. Come on. I don't 
to get snow it started. Okay. All right, sweet. I think I previously mentioned this, but since we weren't running a front brake, we shaved the legs down so that they're just uh, nice and smooth. And then we got them polished locally. Our buddy Bob did the shaving and then Custom Chrome in Cleveland did the polishing. And I think these came out nice. There's a little bit of dirty fingerprints on it, but uh, trust me, they do shine. And so we're just gonna slip these in here and finish assembling the front end. When you're putting tubes in to trees, don't twist them as they go up. This should slide nicely into place. And if it's not sliding nicely, you might have to just clean out of some type of burrs or something like that. But you see a lot of tubes that have Z's all the way down on little zigzag scratches. And that's because somebody was twisting while they went up and that's not the way to do it. So just, they should just slide straight up in there and all the way to where they hit the taper or if it's a 39th to where it's flush at the top. And the first thing you wanna do, stick the nuts on and we're gonna draw it into the taper first to tighten it up. You don't wanna lock your pinch, up, pinch bolts first. On the 35, the taper sets the depth. Okay, get that just kind of snug. That's what we got. And then we'll do the same with the other side. Again, no twisting action, just sliding straight up into the tube, into the trees. All the way to the taper. Got this little cap for the spring. And then same with these. I initially just snug that. That's pretty loose. So you're gonna wanna tighten this up. Yeah, see how loose that was? And with the bottom loose, it'll actually allow this to draw upwards. So you gotta leave this loose so the front end can slide somewhere. We have the top tight, so that's not gonna be able to move. So it needs to be able to slip somewhere. And so we're gonna leave the bottom loose to allow it to have a little bit of play. I'm gonna bring this back this way. You want it to be a little tight and have, have a little bit of drag. At least that's how I like to set them up at. There's lots of people with different preferences, but I like to be a little bit, have a little bit of drag on it, like where you see where it'll, if it's out forward, it'll stay there, but if it moves over, it'll start to flop. And I think that's, let me go a little bit more. I think that's great. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it right there and we're gonna lock that in with this lock, this pinch bolt right up top. Oh, there we go. As you can see on the front end of this bike, we have one side that has a clamp for your axle and the other side is just a through hole. This is pretty typical as far as a Kaya, but this is one of the ways that you'll be able to tell your bike different from other front ends, say if you were going to mount a spool wheel on your bike. This one only has one cap, where Showa's have two caps. And so if you look in your book, this actually goes on the right side. I'm keeping it the same way also with the drains out. If you wanted to do something different, since we're not running a front brake, it's not really, it doesn't matter that much which side you put it on, but we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it like a stock bike with putting it on the right side. And it also captures the larger side of the axle. You'll know right away when you try to put this together that it's not gonna fit if you put it in backwards, but that's the right way for your axle to go. And since it's a Kayaba, these spacers are the same, one on either side, because this is actually the same width and we're centering the wheel. So we're gonna stick this in and starting from the right side again. And just like before. So we start with the axle there. I'm actually gonna have to raise this up. Please don't come out of there. I don't remember this being so choppery. 
There we go. Okay. Start that in there. Get the wheel spacer in there going. There we go. Put the washer, block washer, nut. And you're going to want to draw everything to this side first before you tighten that side up. You might have to snug it, but you don't want to make it super tight to where it's not allowing the axle to slide in there. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, all right, so when you're tightening this side, after you've torqued the axle on that side, you just want to keep going back and forth, and you want this gap to remain nice and even all the way across and also parallel. You don't want it tapering in on one side and then being bigger on the other. You want each side to just be even on both sides and parallel. You might have to just go back and forth, and maybe even if you have to loosen a side, but just keep those even. Uh, tighten them down. And you don't have to grab a caliper or anything unless that makes this easier. Eyeball's good enough, but you should be able to tell parallel. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave that there. So I got this lift lowered down a little bit to bolt the handlebars on. And we're starting with the Forco top clamp. on here. Also just kind of want to check it out with the paint. All right. I think I need to swap out some hardware, but yeah, whoa. All right. I need to clean off the paint on the fender and then I can get that bolted on. So same as before, I'm just cleaning off, cleaning off the bungs, and I'm trying to keep the surface nice around it, which is the purpose for the tape, because it's easy to slip with a razor blade. And so the tape's just there just to kind of keep you from nicking anything else. But same as before, just clean the paint off of these, keep your bolts from coming loose and keep your paint from mushrooming around this. And we're gonna do this to all the bungs that are in the fender. Both sides here, two right in the middle, one at the bottom. And after that, we're gonna bolt it up. We don't have to bolt it up tight because it's gonna have to, it's gonna come on and off the bike a few times before this thing's ready to go down the road. But this is a good time to do this since we've been doing it today. And like I said before, if you powder coated your frame or, or your tins or anything else, you might as well just go straight with the Scotch-Brite on the grinder. That stuff works really well, but it makes a mess. So as long as you don't mind the mess, it's probably an easier way to do this. Green tape is real sticky. There we go, one in a row. And just repeat that for all the bungs. Now we're gonna get the fender in. Like I said before, we're gonna have to take this. This is gonna come on and off a few times because we're also running the wiring in, but I just really wanted to see how this is all gonna look. Yeah, dude. Whoa. I don't know if we previously talked about it, but with all the paint, we were deciding on finishes and we decided to get the oil tank chromed, which I'm really happy about that we did because it kind of gives it a cool dimension. It might have been too much, especially with flames. Can't wait to see it in there. The chrome came out really nice and I think it just kind of, I've seen other bikes 
clearly with painted tins and then chromed oil bags and they just always look super neat. It just, like I said, gives the bike a little bit more dimension instead of having just paint everywhere. It's kind of neat to see, so can't wait to see it bolted in. in the place. There we go. Okay. Oh. It looks great. Yeah, look at this thing. It's very cool looking. I want to just finish putting everything on. Okay, now I'm kind of just bolting on whatever because I'm getting excited and really enjoying how this looks. And this is always a super fun part of the project is it's not really mock-up because it's going back together but it feels like mock-up because a lot of this stuff needs to come back off again to run wires and other stuff I got to paint a bracket for the oil tank but it's still pretty exciting so it's cool to get this together So we clearly got a lot done today. I'm really excited on how this is coming out. I couldn't be happier with the overall look of this bike, the paint, the polish, everything, all the finished parts going back on the bike. Super exciting, I can't wait to ride this thing. But even though this bike looks like it's getting close to being finished, it seems like we only have a few more parts to bolt on. We still have a lot to do, including the wiring, which will be time consuming. We also have like, hardware to actually get finished hardware of, proper lengths, stuff like that, and get everything really torqued down tight to make this thing safe for the road. Like I said, we still have lots to do, so thanks for joining me today, and stay tuned for the next episode of Saturday Sports Shirt. Ba 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 ba